It was 1958 when Colin Powell graduated from City College, and in 1997, he founded the Colin Powell Center for Leadership and Service, which then became the Colin Powell School for Civic and Global Leadership. We take you back to 2013, when our own Andrew Falzone sat down with him at its inauguration. In the Army, they teach you, you know, no matter how cold everybody may be, you're the leader, you're never cold. Troops may be hungry, you're never hungry, you're the leader. They may be tired, you're never tired. Uh, and you're so you, you, you've got to be, you've got to be uh, optimistic that mm -hmm. things will get better. And I think the, our youngsters don't get enough of that. And that may be why retired General Colin Powell has maintained such close ties with City College. As a kid growing up in the Bronx, Powell was unsure of the direction his life would take, but that all changed in 1954. That's when Powell began working on his geology degree at City College of New York and stumbled upon what became his life's calling. You said that when you came here to City College, uh, ROTC was something you connected with for the yep. first time in your life. You really found yourself. Mm -hmm. What was it about ROTC that you did connect with? Well, I was, I was a little over 17 years old when I tripped over ROTC in the summer of uh, 1954. And it was the structure, it was the discipline, it was the guys. You know, when, you, when you're 17 or so and you're leaving home really for the first time, uh, you're kind of adrift. And I found a new home, I found a new family. Uh, with my fellow students here in the ROTC. After graduating from City College in 1958, Powell served two tours in Vietnam. Upon his return, he was chosen to serve as a White House fellow with the Nixon administration. In 1987, he would become National Security Advisor to President Reagan, and in 1989, he became a four-star general under President George H.W. Bush, and later that year was nominated to be Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. At 52 years old, he became the youngest Joint Chiefs Chair. He was also the first chairman to come out of ROTC. In 2001, Powell was again called to serve his country, but this time the general would leave his military uniform at home and serve as Secretary of State to George W. Bush. As a soldier transitioning into diplomacy, um, was it harder for you to, to not be the Army General, the orders get done? No, not, not particularly because I had been National Security Advisor for two years to President Reagan, so I kind of understood the civilian side of, of government. Uh, and when I walked into the State Department, uh, somebody said, well, what do we call you, General or Mr. Secretary? I said, Mr. Secretary, I'm Secretary of State. In 1989, Parade Magazine had published your 13 Rules of Leadership. For CUNY students and alumni, what guidelines would you give them today? The reporter who wrote that article asked me to look at some little sayings I had under my desk glass that he heard about and just read off some of them. I read off the first 13. Number one says, you know, it isn't as bad as you think. It'll be better in the morning. And the 13th rule is, is a, a derivative from a military saying, and that is that always think things are going to get better, no matter how bad things may seem at the moment. And I think that's an attitude for young people. They, they face difficulties in school, they face other difficulties in life, and it starts to get them down. And so, no man, never be down, always be up. While Powell's military career influenced his tenure as Secretary of State, he already had experience with international relations as a kid growing up in the South Bronx. When you were uh, a young man growing up in the city, my understanding is you worked in a baby furniture store yep. and you picked up some Yiddish sayings. Yeah, okay. Did any of those translate, you know, did you get any wisdom or guidance from yeah, those? Yeah, whenever, whenever I was kind of annoyed with somebody, I got you know, hit you in the side of the head or uh -huh. a blessing, and depending on how you say it, it's either a blessing or a slap in the side of the head. I preferred it as a slap in the side of the head. The biggest lesson I got from my experience in the toy store was from the Russian immigrant Jew who owned it, uh, Jay Sixer. And after I'd worked there for a few summers and a few Christmas seasons, he, he pulled me aside and he said to me, Kali, you're, you're a good worker. I love having you in the store. You're part of the family. But listen, you know, you can't ever stay here. You have to get your education. You've got a good family and you're smart. Go get your education. Make sure you move on. And so I never had any intention of staying in that toy store. But I was so touched that he thought enough of me to tell me that I had the potential to do other things in life and don't think that I should stay there. Powell became known for his hands-on approach while running the State Department. He plans on bringing that same approach to City College. I'll be spending uh, a lot of time up here at City. We used to have just a center to worry about. Now we have a much larger school to worry about and five academic departments I want to get to know and visit. And 
So I was spending a lot more time in that city. Powell has also been granted a distinguished professorship at City College. As the Colin Powell School prepares for its inaugural semester, it will incorporate some of the same lessons that Colin Powell himself learned as a young New Yorker 50 years ago. What I learned in New York, uh, in, in the multi-ethnic neighborhood I grew up in, everybody was from somewhere else. Uh, everybody had about the same level of income in the family. So we were all kind of equals, and we had to get along, and we had diverse backgrounds. And I think I learned from that how to sort of respect uh, what diversity is and respect others.